the match that could actually cause a lot of trauma for somebody. Uh, we got Ganon and we got a Shulk, both characters. Kind of known for all the craziness that could happen online, but uh, we got to see Seabass a little bit earlier. Uh, kind of do cool stuff. I don't know if it works the same on a character like Shulk, but we got to see him fight K. Rule and uh, mm -hmm. got to see some crazy stuff. I'll be right back. I just need to quickly get myself some more seltzer. I'll yeah, take your time. So sorry. All right, so trying to catch that roll with the down smash definitely would have did it. Uh, I don't know what it would have looked like being uh, in shield bus or uh, shield Monado, but um, not looking good there when it's not on. So that is going to be up the taken out NZ. And Seabass continuing to just like stay on top of NZ. Uh, this is actually super aggressive Ganon play. This is the kind of thing that gives people nightmares. Ganon's just like such a hard read character in like a world of Wi Fi where, you know, the decision making of, of reads and everything like that is much more than technical stuff, so it gets the advantage. But either way, um, NZ is going to sort of mitigate some of the damage. It does toss Seabass away to get the first stop. And let's see what he could do. Does have Buster Monado on and already sort of uh, well, nearly passing Seabass in percent before Seabass answers back, but see what the switch is, what NZ decides to do Monado-wise. He's going to play it safe. Trying to catch him on the recovery instead. Okay, there we go. So opting for some mobility. Um... It is kind of scary still being in the air with Ganon because he has enough things in the air that just covers a lot of space. But here we go, Smash Monado. Um, lots of lots of things could have killed that way. Instead, Speed now. Going to try and chase Seabass again. Still kind of scary chasing Seabass. Or Ganon, rather, off stage. And that shield is looking tiny, so not going to be able to rely eye on it. But it's going to be able to rely... Wow. Uh, Shield Monado saving NZ's bacon there. That up smash would definitely kill him otherwise. And uh, what a commitment! I just came. Yeah, back that was see that. definitely not on <laughs> he purpose. Said, I'm but, done. Yeah. I've had enough. I don't blame him though. Like, regardless of whether you died or not, that was kind of a smart play because I feel like you. I don't know. Seabass is playing really aggressive right now, and I was just thinking for it's like the things nightmares are made out of, like a really fast in your face gaming. I feel like he's caught on to MZ's defensive habits so well. Like, I just saw, like, that one string and tech chase that he connected on the PS2 platform. That looked so, so scary. He almost got the jump lead as well with his foil in. I feel like he's maybe a little bit in NZ's head right now. And he crossed up the shield in such a safe way as well. Goodness. Yeah, his uh, decision-making from Seabass is actually quite incredible, <clears throat> considering the limitations of Ganon otherwise, but he makes this character look really fast. Uh, I understand we're watching Wi-Fi and yada yada yada, who cares, but like, that's, yeah, his decision making though is actually very good. That space death tilt was really brilliant as well, because like he could have either set up like a really good like uh, situation for himself, and you know even the fact that he whiffed it, it was still extremely safe. Look at that nasty angle that sends that Shulk just barely being able to make it back. And spacing that dash attack once again on shield like that. Yeah. Like really little smudge just like crossing up. Wow. Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. That. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's still scary. You could be Shulk and have Jump Monado, but it's still scary being in the air against Ganon. Yeah. <laughs> like, no matter what you do. Um, because he it's has... It's the great equalizer. You know, no matter who you want, no matter where you come from, your, your background, Ganon will still kind of, you know, put the figure of God into you. When you when you when you go off stage against him. Yeah, like I mean that. that's his job. He's like the dark prince. He's like a, a real real nasty guy. And Seabass is making him look like it. So yeah, even trying to jump over again is just gonna catch you. So Seabass looking kinda nice. Uh coming just from a match. Uh that's actually uploaded. I gotta actually officially upload it though against um Bandit's K rule earlier, which was definitely a bit of a slobber knocker, but here we are seeing now Ganon versus Shulk, uh, another, as I was saying, controversial Wi-Fi character, but I don't know. Uh, NZ's been making it pretty far in these brackets week to week. I think he got top eight last week or the week before, possibly both. Yeah, something uh, something like that. Um, but regardless, right now I just feel like NZ, he's just not able to get anything started. And I feel like every single time he's winning neutral, he doesn't have like a big like combo set out in front of him. He's just like sort of getting a hit. And obviously Ganon is going to excel much more in the hit for hit department. 
Yeah, definitely. That's that's what this character is is essentially made for. Uh, you know, if you're gonna box with him or you're gonna sort of go hit for hit, he's he's gonna come out on top from that. But um, if I think if NZ starts being a little bit more cognizant of the Monado use, um, especially against Ganon, that's gonna be the, oh my lord. <laughs> so yeah, I have no words for that. Monado Honestly, wouldn't have done anything point, there. Like, just yeah. have to hold that. That was. <laughs> So that's, I think, two shield breaks we've seen out of CDAS today, out of the two sets we've seen. Both ending in a <laughs> reverse Warlock punch, but NZ finally... Such a proper edge guard. He spaced himself so well just outside of the command grab, making sure that he wouldn't have to eat that stock there, um, and just, like, timed it and followed Ganon's drift. Yeah, that was really patiently spaced. He really didn't overcommit. That was, a, that was very smart on NZ's part. Oh, right now, is he going to be able? Yes, he is able to come back from so deep. And see Bash just barely making it on himself as well. 111%. This is more than enough. Like, the next hit NZ takes is, is you know, that's going to be the stock. I love the way that he's just facing these forwarders right now. Like, they're safe on shield. Like, they're going to catch jumps. They're going to catch him standing. That move just has so much pressure. Yeah, it's really good. It's probably one of the better ones in the kit uh, for Ganon. So, or, oh. Let's see. All right, here we go. So NZ is in a position. Excuse me, a position to actually, maybe not the right option there, but still in the position to get himself in what would be the first lead of the game if he could find a way to get in on seed ass without getting got, which is. Kind what of a good wait for. that was. He just stood in the corner for a second. He waited for Seabass to press the first button. He waited for him to get a little bit overly ambitious. And once again, he's just not able to cover all of these cross ups. I feel like NZ is starting to play a little bit more reactively. He's starting to sort of wait for Seabass to be initiating the first button, and then he has like a proper response to it. He's giving Seabass the right amount of space, exactly what I meant there. He positioned himself perfectly in order to be able to react, fade back, and punish the down B. Um, but that instance, he did not space himself properly to punish the up B. Yeah, NZ quickly, uh, even in a back up though, with just an up tilt, definitely gonna be enough to take out Ganon. And we'll see NZ start to move a little bit with the, with the, uh, with a fast Monado, but here's Buster, so he is gonna look to keep getting percent, and he's gotta because he's gotta get C Bass at kill percent um, yeah. as quickly as he can. And yeah, this is the Monado management I was talking about a little earlier. He just said, yeah, he yes. just said, I'm slashing neutral. <laughs> wow, oh well played God, by NZ. Menacing. Very well played. So there we go. NZ is gonna keep the winner's bracket dreams alive. Uh, gonna tie it up 1-1. And that yeah. was a set that that or a, a game that was a game. Uh, very back and forth the whole way through. But after this, I wasn't sure what to expect for <laughs> for NZ. But he did recover pretty nicely. Did end up winning the game. So uh, here we go. Game three set. I think uh, yeah we've now a couple game three sets, which is always nice to get on the stream. Better better than the blowouts. But. The winner of this will go to winner semis to play against the winner of Arya and Air Swimmer. I feel like NZ really played this game so much better. I think he was playing much more patiently, much more reactive. He was respecting Ganon's space a whole lot more and sort of waited for Seabass to initiate the first button, especially with those down Bs. Like he was just able to fade back, get the right punish on them every single time. I think that was super well played, and I just feel like he held his advantage just a little bit better as well, um, just a little bit more consistent with his punishes towards the end of game two. Yeah, definitely cleaned it up, and he had to because that game one was did not really look very good for NZ. Um, but this is exactly what I mean. Like already 28 percent in stage control, but Ganon with oh just God. two hits, he dealt 52. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was two hits. That yeah. was side B into down smash. Again, ganon has got it like that. I mean, I know we're still talking about oh my, how bottom tier this character is, and I'm not gonna say he's not. But like, if you get just caught in a couple of hits, that, that's all it takes. That's why this character is a headache. What? Oh, but that F smash killing so early as well. What is happening? This is a, this is this is a clown fiesta. Oh, well, he had the right idea trying to push in a little bit, but obviously you can't be contesting with shovels retreating back here like that. 
Um, yeah, he just keeps trying to fight his way out of the corner. It seems like he's always trying to catch a da dash in with his own dash attack, but Seabass is just not able to find it. Yeah, we'll see uh, right now in that very even territory. Um, and I feel like this is a position that Seabass, at least the sets that I've seen, finds himself in, my, in a lot. Really good delayed recovery from MZ, kept himself alive because that was yeah. almost certain doom. Honestly, oh. like the lack of a vertical hitbox on Shulk as he is going up, and the fact that it's so easy for him to leave his head exposed and snap onto ledge just makes him so susceptible to getting spiked like that. I feel like every single time MZ keeps trying to punish these cross ups on his shield with a falling nail instead of committing to something like a dash up grab, because I feel like every time Seabass is crossing up his shield, he is just holding his own shield. So this is oh, oh my god, real cheeky. Did you see how far that up be hit? That was yeah, like, that's. That was... I think that shouldn't be able to happen, but a pretty smart play by NZ running off and did want to get the gimp instead, recovering ASAP, knowing that you catch the bastion in the recovery, and yeah, gonna want to get off of that ledge for sure. Don't want anything yeah. funny happening. <laughs> on the edge I think of the that's right now banner. he's trying to make. Uh... Like, he's trying to condition NZ to start shielding, and he's doing so successfully. So soon he's going to be able to capitalize a little bit more with some run-up grabs, with some command grabs. As he's just, like, making him nervous in the corner like that. Yeah, and that is, that's a good way to put it. See, that's is really good at just making you nervous. Because um, that's the thing I'm seeing, is he's throwing out so many threatening options, just like up smash. Just kind of trying to catch a landing, and that's like a whole move you gotta respect. And Seabass being a good player, he could totally condition you into that and just hit you with anything else. But... That good grab was so risky, especially with oh. Smash Arts being active. <gasps> but the low, ah, oh, he wanted was... to commit to it all, but now he just forced himself into the corner against Seabass. He, he might have just given up the game by g going off like that. Yeah, Seabass using the platform to recover too high, and wow, oh. really good. Well played by MZ. That was, uh, Really good set by both of these players. That was about as close as it gets. <laughs> that, that was kill percent for both of them, even if it didn't look like it. But uh, congrats to NZ for moving on to winner semis. Yeah, I've got to say, I really, really, I kind of dislike the way that NZ at the end, he ran off and went for the forward air. Um, You know, he almost SD'd there. He gave up all the stage control. I feel like Seabass could have played, like, he could have like trapped a little bit better 